Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the uh, delay. Uh, they were trying to get the uh, microphone on me. So, thank you. Thank you to all of you for being here. Nada, un placer. It's a pleasure to be part of such an interesting event uh, and uh, the, that has to do with the sphere of the VT. And I would also like to thank the Basque government on behalf of the University of Deusto. Today we'll be speaking about uh, another uh, paradigm that will be part of a VT in the future, and that is the world of data. Many people are speaking about this, and in the Basque country, many things are being done regarding data. One of my uh, challenges is after uh, Unai's uh, wonderful um, talk, a person that is exporting technology from the Basque country to the rest of the world, to speak how we're doing really interesting things also regarding data, and that's what's uh, happening. And in fact, it's happening at a very fast speed. The algorithms I'm going to speak about today that have changed many uh, value chains, not only in the Basque country, but also in other places in the world, goes at a very fast speed. It, it takes an eye to blink 400 milliseconds, an algorithm goes at a, a speed that is even smaller. And today I'm going to start by speaking about the applications and the things that are being done. And I will start with one of my favorite examples, which is this map you have here. I think I can open the map, and what you are going to see on the screen is me driving through Spain in real time. Uh, this is uh, useful for my wife, but also for my insurance company, because they know exactly where I am. They know the speed I'm driving at, the uh, roads I usually take, the places where I usually stop, and my uh, G-speed when uh, going fast or slow. And this was created by someone from Ondarribi in the Basque country. And it's the second big uh, data insurance company in Spain. I'm sure you're all concerned. You're calling your wives and husbands to explain uh, different uh, issues, but I'm going to give you more information. Before, I used to pay around 500 euros for my insurance. Now I have to pay 240. Have I convinced you already? Yes. That's uh, usually uh, something very helpful for human beings. Once you have to pay less, we all react in a different way. But if you have some knowledge of the insurance uh, company business, this is not very good for the industry. Because this uh, insurance, uh, if you need to be a toad, for example, would be a problem because then they would have a deficit. Can we go back to the presentation, please? So where's the business? The business should be somewhere else. Where's the business? Yes, in the data. With your smile, I knew you meant data. And uh, this data that I generate in real time, because with transparency you're seeing my life. And uh, I also come to uh, San Sebastian, if you don't see this. But I go from Madrid to Bilbao every week. And many things happen. Because I need uh, to stop. We also need to eat lunch. Computer scientists also eat lunch, and uh, there's also wear of uh, different uh, parts in the car. So how does this uh, insurance company make money? Well, they make money regarding everything that happens. Uh, uh, surrounding the vehicle, everything you see there. I'm driving and they tell me where do I have to stop for a petrol because they know if I'm going to leave Madrid at 8, I'm going to need to stop uh, for dinner. And uh, as it knows in real time how much petrol I have left, they know where I usually stop 
or in what kind of restaurant I usually stop to eat dinner. And they say, uh, here there's a good meat. For example, you from Bilbao usually like this. And in fact, I'm also offering a 10% discount uh, there, which is something that we uh, usually like. You give a 1% discount and you make uh, anyone just change their mind. So if it, instead of a ten, a 1, it's a 10% discount, then it's much better. So who are the uh, customers of Next Insurance? We're not its customers. We're uh, the ones that supply the data. The uh, customers are those working on anything that has to do with the vehicle because we uh, spent between 2,000 and 2,500 uh, euros in those uh, things. So we generate all this value thanks to the data that is being generated in real-time activities. Some of the things you will be seeing in the following examples is that still uh, everything is to be done and uh, everything is new and many of the things are being done here in the Basque Country. We don't have to go to San Francisco to see people that are applying a logic and with new ideas are creating an insurance company in which we just uh, provide the uh, data and we don't pay so much because their business is somewhere different. And this is the paradigm of big data that we will have in the following years. And if for uh, vehicles that is an industry uh, going through change, imagine what's happening with drones. What you see here is the second insurance company created a uh, for uh, drones. It uh, was uh, created in London, but by someone from Bilbao. Yes, I usually get these seconds of silence after saying this. Yes, in fact, uh, he is from Bilbao. The first insurance company that in an industry that will be present in our cities in the future uh, gives you an insurance for you driving your drone. The same concept brought from a vehicle to a drone. Yesterday, they said that they will be spending 2.5 uh, pounds in uh, the technology that has to do with drones. For example, music festivals. We have them in, uh, in San Sebastian, in Vitoria, and in Bilbao. And I'm sure many of you have been in this uh, wonderful uh, festivals, yes. And uh, you've uh, worn a bracelet. This uh, wristbands or bracelets have uh, changed uh, this uh, kind of leisure activities. For any program of vocational training which you talk about uh, leisure activities, this kind of technologies are going to change the way in which you do things. In a festival, this is uh, quite obvious. This is what we do when we go in. We all identify ourselves. And when a good band is there, we're all there as a uh, and then we all go for a drink. This is generating real-time data. And this data, explaining where we are, what we're drinking, eating, uh, what uh, sponsors we get uh, closer to, is uh, information that would be of interest for someone else. And I would go to personal data later on. So someone is interested in this data, but mainly the festival itself wants to know because one of the problems that many activities have is that they don't know what's happening. But with this wristband, I know exactly where people are and what they're doing. I don't care what their name is because what I want to know is what their behavior is and what they like best or less, which of the... Uh, and bands create more consumption, which means that uh, they didn't like them as much. And let's uh, talk about uh, the attendees themselves, something that hasn't uh, been do, done in Spain yet, but we're working on this. Imagine you get to a festival, but they give you a personal uh, route of uh, where you have to go. If I know what you like, this is something possible to do. So we're talking of uh, trivial issues like going to a music festival and changing the experience. What about uh, cities? I don't know if any of you, I understand, uh, probably some of you have visited Palma de Mallorca or you are from Palma de Mallorca. 
Uh, Palma. Uh, this was probably written by someone from Bilbao, but it has uh, the biggest um, free uh, Wi-Fi network. And the creator is someone that is very intelligent. He created a Terra, and he's a, a wonderful mind of technology, and he understands the economy of data. The next time you go to Palma, try and find this read uh, wi uh, free Wi-Fi. And some of you are saying yes, because you're uh, becoming aware of something, and that's that this uh, network is faster than your uh, connection with uh, Euskaltel, Vodafone, Movistar, Yoigo and uh, you are not uh, consuming your own data. So what are you all going to do? Of course, you're going to be connected to this free Wi-Fi. When you're connected to this free Wi-Fi, what can I do with that data? Well, let me show you. This is the uh, beach of Benidorm. I'm sure many of you have also been uh, there. There's always many people from... Um, Bilbao and si San Sebastian Europa, and Vitoria. And this is something that also happens in Mallorca. There is, uh, for example, a plane coming in from Moscow or Berlin or London, and it has uh, 300 uh, people inside. The first thing uh, we do when we all go uh, abroad is to connect ourselves to uh, the uh, free Wi-Fi. Who is going to be interested in this data? Because now in real time I know where all these people are. And uh, I don't know who these people are and I don't really care and I insist on this idea. I don't care what their ID number is. I'm not interested at all in this. But who can be interested and who... Uh, these people or ah, where these people eh, are. Sí. For example, the, uh, eh. respuesta, the tax collectors, you said? Oh, that's, I always ask this, but no one had ever given me this answer. So I see none of you have gone to eh, the um, discotheques in Palma. But I've been. And how can this information be useful for this uh, discotheque in Palma? And my friends in uh, marketing uh, say that this is something that you really like. When someone gives you free Wi Fi uh, connection, uh, you like it. You're happy about it. So imagine that at uh, that point in time they say, Pacha is giving you free Wi Fi. I know that you no, don't go to Pacha, but I do. So what are you going to do that night? You probably will go to Pacha. That's right. So that's the biggest uh, media agency in uh, Palma. They uh, deploy a router in each of the lamplights in the bay, and I know where everyone is located. And when 30 of them are moving together in a group, then that's the good group. And all of this in real time. And as I can also get to know, imagine that someone wants to know what's happening with the Liverpool-Manchester United uh, match. They're probably British, because it's not the same as someone is looking at a, a match with uh, the Spartak of, uh, from Moscow. So... I know through this the kind of message I need to send to them. And this is something that will be changing in cities. We will see more of these examples. We will have this kind of maps. And you know that in Spain we already have uh, banks that are offering aggregate anonymous uh, data of what you consume. I can know what you're all consuming, not who, but the what, and we can have these uh, maps of uh, people that get to the bay in Palma and also the kinds of uh, products that they're consuming. And one of the banks that is working more on this is the BBVA that has uh, solutions as the one you see there and for each uh, Spanish city it gives you uh, the, what, a map of what is being consumed in which streets. How can this be useful? For example, if you're talking about marketing and training for VET or if you want to know where to open a, a ca cafe or a jewelry shop, where do I have more uh, business opportunity? If I know uh, building 
buildings are going to be uh, built, uh, exactly what kind of shops do we have in the area. So if I can see what the economic activity is in that area, I can study these issues. Here we have the impact of uh, the uh, Mobile World Congress, and here in real time we're seeing what is being uh, consumed uh, by each of the attendees, and with this we can see where, what people who goes to Madrid and from where and so on and so forth. So all these kind of solutions are solutions provided by technologies that measure uh, this data in real time. But now I go to the e-business uh, world, and I'm sure in some of your training you also talk about e-business. Here I have to, two entrepreneurs from Vergara. You know that Vergara is uh, close by, and I, if I say e-commerce, I'm sure that you're talking, uh, believing I'm talking about 20 year old, but they are 50 and 53, and they know that digital technologies are changing things. And as you can see, one of the things that they sell are sunglasses. They sell sunglasses through the internet. And you would ask yourselves, how is this new? It is new because one of the biggest elements that is changing e-commerce nowadays, if you look at the success stories of e-commerce in Spain, they've all done the following. And that is that when someone is uh, checking out a sunglass, if you're in a site checking this, and remember this, that um, a site without knowing who you are, is uh, registering uh, lots of uh, data. Because if I see that you check a specific model um, on different occasions or in a group of models, I know that you are someone that uh, likes this kind of a lens in this uh, specific uh, color and that is uh, different to another kind of a lens with a different shape and color. So without asking anyone, the next time you go to that site, what's going to happen? Then I will give them those options that they were checking before to welcome to the web technologies that adapt content to what we each like. This is something that you will see in future years, not only in e-commerce, but also in newspapers. In Spain, there are still not uh, newspapers that do this, but there are other newspapers in other places of the world that give you the information you usually check. If I go to the website of my municipality, I want to know about the events I'm interested in. So they tailor the content to the profiles of the persons going into the site. My 50 and 53 year old friends are now also selling uh, bags, clothes for uh, cyclists. Uh, so it doesn't matter. If I have a technology that really understands my consumer, I can uh, sell whatever, black scarves in summer, as long as I have people that are interested on this. And this is something that we will see more and more in future years. Or lo quiero. Who knows about this site? No one? Okay, one person over there. You can imagine where the person that created this is from. These are facts. This is not biased. And they've created the per first personal uh, shopping online in Spain. And they... You will say, this sounds very American, but we're all uh, familiar with this concept. As you can imagine, I'm very strict when uh, purchasing clothes, but I also like to be surprised. And this is how this uh, works. You provide your data to the company. They send you six boxes, and you choose one. And the other five uh, thing, items that you don't like, you send them back. If I start to see what you like, because you have one box and you've also provided me with data, the next time I won't be asking anything. The next time I will surprise you. What's your name? I will surprise Vanessa. 
and uh, we all like to be surprised. I'm going to send you something that you didn't even know you would like. And my friends from marketing call this emotional impact. And I call it being smart. And that is to uh, get ahead and surprise someone uh, without them knowing that this is something that they wanted. The last time I talked with this uh, platform, they had um, 100 employees. So in the Basque country, we are creating platforms that are transforming the ways in which we do things. People like Vanessa, who is the target for this platform that doesn't have time to go uh, shopping, and they have an algorithm that will uh, tailor this uh, shopping experience. How many companies uh, will there exist where you can get ahead of what people want to buy? And uh, finishing with my examples, one of the things I never say in front of an audience, and that's why I say it here today, is that I have a political past. What you see uh, there behind me, in the elections of June 2016, in which the uh, Spanish people voted, I hope you all voted, and there was a repetition of that election, and one of the main political parties, through intermediaries, called me and said, I don't have money. Please tell me who I have to have as a target or create an impact on. And this is the dream of uh, politics. The opposite paradigm are those uh, envelopes that you get at home that usually all go to the trash can. So when there is a repetition of elections, there is no money. So you need to try and see who you have to send your political message to. And one of the fascinating things about this project is that uh, humans and beings react to this. When we are uh, told uh, or talked about things that concern us, this is something that always remains. This is called the recency uh, effect, and that is that you uh, have a last message in your head and then you vote. I'm sure you're all checking out your geographical area. The people from Gipuzkoa will be sad because you're not present at all. I'm sorry that there was uh, nothing happening there and the uh, people from Vizcaya are present. And then there's a small uh, one in Vitoria. But there are many paradoxes. For example, in Alaba and in Vizcaya, we don't vote in the same way. You see the color pattern? But in Vizcaya, we share many things uh, with uh, people uh, from Cadiz. When I was young, I went to the beaches in Conil, and we shared many things there too. And we also share um, many things with people from Asturias and from Rías Baixas in Galicia. What do we share? Yes, we all have beaches. We all want to vote and to get a beach nearby. Sometimes it's, they say that we are vote uh, in the same way because uh, we have the Atlantic, but it was June 2016. There was a, was a big destruction of industrial employment at the time. Do you see other color patterns? If I had time, I would be able to explain everything, but you can see other uh, color patterns. This uh, party Mm. looked at uh, Andalusia as one block, but in Andalusia we have many different things going on, many different kinds of cities. It is like Marbella, and we see the inside of Andalusia in green, and then we go to Extremadura, and we, they seem to vote, uh, taking into account what's happening with uh, agriculture. Because if you talk with someone from Jaén uh, you, and you talk about livestock or olives, they're always very concerned about this. But in the coast area, the uh, voting is uh, different. There's identity problems because there's lots of immigrations. There are uh, even towns where they speak more German or English than Spanish. So the question here would be, 
How do I get this data? Because when we talk about big data, and that's why I always like to start with the examples, I think uh, you are thinking about your uh, traditional uh, database. One of the uh, things in the paradigm of big data is that, of course, this contributes, but value is uh, built from there onwards. The main value is to think where the data is that can help me with my business. So how? Can I measure what the concerns are for someone from Jaén or Zamora or Ciudad Real? Where can I find that data? What's happening to you is normal because it took us three weeks to find the answer. The only place where you can find this data is in newspapers, local newspapers. If you uh, read the headlines of El Diario de Jaén, the local newspaper that I'm sure you read every day, and you see that in, during 300 uh, days there's something regarding uh, uh, olive trees and rain, it uh, seems like uh, that's the uh, main concern, concerns having to do with uh, the weather and uh, the olive trees. If I take these other areas, Vizcaya, Asturias, Galicia and Cadiz, and I uh, uh, see that they're talking about industrial employment, then I see that that is the main concern. And then you also see these points in red, and that's that in Madrid and uh, Barcelona, they also uh, vote in the same way. There's a, a punishment uh, vote. We had all the uh, corruption uh, cases uh, at the time, so there was this uh, punishment vote. And what do I do with all this uh, data? I uh, build a narrative, a message, and a communication so that all the citizens from these places receive their personalized message. This was the first uh, uh, project. You can find this on the internet, explaining everything we did, and it was the first time we did political marketing. And in the next elections, and there might be some news on Friday, now Ciudadanos is starting to speak about this, as well as other parties, but with all the uh, problems after Facebook and Cambridge Analytics, uh, I'm surprised that this was already done in June 2016. But as you see, there's no personal data here, and that's the big difference. So uh, that's a, uh, I have a talk that is very different to what I'm used, you're usually used to uh, listening to. I rarely need the personal data. I just need to know what their characteristics are, their likes and dislikes. And in many cases, uh, this is not regulated, and people don't know that this exists. I'm going to start uh, finishing with the examples. And I guess you all know what that, that is. Do you know what that is? That's uh, beetroot. And Alaba is the province in Spain where they have more uh, uh, sugar bits, which uh, impacted uh, me as uh, data. I sent this to all my friends in uh, Alaba. But they uh, have an accumulation of sugar, and there are many elements that condition this. And this uh, sugar bit accumulates uh, this to create sugar. When I started to work in computer sciences, and no one explained to me that this was a, such a big industry. If I had known before uh, what were the elements that had a greater effect in this uh, damn uh, fruit, because it's taking a lot of hours in my life to uh, do this accumulation process, because I'm giving a lot of value to, to human beings. One of them is the owner of this company, but also the farmers, and even more in Spain, where there is an operational inefficiency at a farming level. If I'm able to tell tell the uh, farmer what is the perfect combination of herbicides, uh, fungicides, 
and uh, other elements that need to be used to maximize the uh, uh, sugar accumulation period, then I'm transforming the industry that has uh, lived in a blind manner. And this is a fascinating uh, system because it almost works as it did when my grandfather is alive. Everyone listens to what others do. They tell me that these people use herbicides at 6 in the morning, for example. And they even have a WhatsApp group uh, about this. And they tell each other if this, if this was a, a thesis. And they don't take into account the traceability of data. Where are we observing a great revolution in issues like drones? Because drones and satellites are providing uh, aerial views in which I can see exactly uh, what is the situation of the field where the uh, nitrogen is accumulated as well as the herbicides. And I can tell uh, um, one of the farmers, stop listening to your neighbors and read this. Don't have uh, more included in this area because it already has a lot of ni nitrogen and you can save costs. So the first company that uh, manufactures sugar is going to its suppliers, the farmers, and is giving them the uh, adequate combination of all these elements and materials to be able to be profitable. And as this is a, a critical project, because when we have no more subsidies, the farmers are not going to receive this money and are going to plant whatever is more profitable, and the logic changes. De fabricación de un producto, so this is applicable for any companies. It's no longer a, a company that manufactures oranges, bananas, or sugar, but they're a service company. So we're talking here about complete changes, radical changes in the way we do things. And here, that's what the big data paradigm is all about. Big data is also being used to detect talent in organizations. This is people analytics. If I can model how my my company's employees are behaving, I can, dis I can find out how different employees influence each other. And also, this is happening, this is another thing. The other day, actually, I was in America, I received a call from a Catalan friend, and he said to me, I love you people in mass marketing, you're so fascinating and you're able to do things that I like to do. Have you all heard about the Pink Panther? The Pink Panther, I'm diabetic by the way. And he said to me, I want to associate the Pink Panther with to health and wellness. He wanted to associate this this product, which is disgusting to healthy lives. You're uh, horrified. I can see you're horrified. I can see from the look on your faces. The thing is... There's people like this, not me, not me, these people. A human being like me that's uh, tall, dark and handsome goes to the gym. This is a gym monitor in Jaén. Jaén's coming up a lot today in the talk, by the way. And he had a community of 20,000 followers. Every time he put a photo up on Instagram, and you know, we've all got a friend like this. These people that lift a weight and their veins all start bulging. And every time he put a photo on Instagram or Facebook, they got 15,000 likes. So they had people that were really hooked on him. So this is what's in, in called in Spanish society influencers. But actually, in the US, they're called brand prescribers. That's completely different. I call them micro influencers because people think about Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo he or Lara Mendy. But I think of, in terms of Juanjo.com, who's the guy behind me on the screen. Let's just imagine that he takes a photo of himself lifting a weight, and on his, in his left hand he's got a pink panther bar. What do you think his, the community of 20,000 followers were going to do? 
You can imagine. So, welcome to the industry of social influencers, which has been badly named in Spain, but actually does help brand influence. This is still not regulated by advertising law, but this is what's going to happen. I'm going to finish by saying a few words about the retail world. This you can see here is one of the paradigms that is happening. The retail world in vocational educational training should interest you because the retail world is going through a tremendous changes because of Amazon. In six months it will be here in Madrid, by the way. Amazon uh, have, has different ways of competing, and I want you to, to listen, listen to this. You can imagine who's competing face-to-face -face with Amazon. I'm not going to give the name, but you can imagine. But Walmart made a mistake in its life, which was with Toys R Us. And then they decided that they wanted to compete with Amazon face to face. Walmart's the biggest retailer on the planet, by the way, in case you didn't know that. And they decided to compete with Amazon. But Amazon, what they offer you is a huge range of products that they deliver very quickly and very cheap prices. And Walmart said, I'm going to do the same thing. And that's, you can see what happened. Walmart get, got some really lukewarm reaction, and yet Amazon has never stopped growing. But Amazon has a problem, which is, do you remember my friends from Bergara, the guys about the, that make the glasses, you remember? They've got great product, they're doing really well. This is all great. Amazon has two buts. One is the commissions they charge, and the other, which is far more important, is that Amazon never, ever is going to give you data. Never. You don't know who you're selling to. They'll say to you, I owe you 87,000 euros. And they say, OK, well, give me the average age of the people I've sold to. You know, where are these glasses being sold? Morocco? Where? Italy? Bilbao? Who's buying my glasses? Well, probably no sunglasses are sold in Bilbao, but anyway, they won't give you any data. Why? Because that's their business. So you're now thinking, OK, I know how to uh, compete with A Amazon. Let's think about somebody local, Eroski. What can Eroski do? Why are you sad? You all look very sad out there. I'm, I'm saying we can compete with Amazon, don't worry. Data, you've got to do is offer data. Do you think that Kaiku have ever had data of who they sell their products to? Do you think that Solan, the cabras, know who drinks their milk? Do you know uh, who Orbea sends its, sells its bikes to? For the first time in history, you can give manufacturers data, data about who is buying their products. And this is what in the US has been christened as shared data, which is a paradigm which is beginning to arrive in Spain to change value chains. So these database analysts don't like the fact that we're sharing data. But it's an interesting uh, paradigm because you as a database analyst, you wanted to protect your data. But now your mission seems to be to share this data. Why? Because it's going to be the only way all the success cases of people who have competed successfully against Amazon is because they offer data, sharing data. So imagine, if I sell milk, the amount of things that I could do and change, for example, packaging, pricing, different family formats, uh, half-litre packages, mini packages, I could adapt if I had data, if I knew things that I didn't know in the past. And this is what's happening in many uh, supermarkets in the US. And let's talk now about health. We're very interested in health in the Basque country, of course. In Spain, health systems are only just beginning with this. But imagine, for example, if I can get ahead of something that's before. Remember that Vanessa's personally shop, personal shopping? Or imagine personal health care. If I can 
know which uh, patients are going to be referred to me if I could get some kind of efficiency out of it. Imagine the amount of efficiency that I could provide my systems with. And this is what's happening in some hospitals in Paris, in the US, and it's now what's called personalized healthcare. Everybody gets what they really need. And you can actually go get one step ahead of what they really need. Let's imagine, for example, that people don't like that when they say, when people say to them, oh, you're going to have a chip in your skin one day soon. People get very upset about that, but I'm prepared to offer myself as a volunteer and have as many chips on my body as you want. I don't know why in Spain we're so obsessed with this problem. I think it's because we all think that, that it's going to be like Facebook, but it's not. It's not going to be like Facebook. Here you've got heat maps of contagious areas. So in short, my dear friends, this, we're in a new era. All these examples that I've given you, and, and many of them are local examples, a lot of things can be done. We're doing lots of things, but we're doing things differently. Something that you, I can't think that you might walk away with today is that these things are already defined. No, 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 they're not. There's no standard solutions. There's no one-size-fits-all. It's What you've got is a tool. The paradigm of big data is it's new answers to new questions, and we've got to find those new answers to new, those new questions. We like this, we human beings, old answers to old questions, because we feel all comfortable in that corner. I know the answer to the question that I've been asked 14 times, but no, that's no good. No good. Walmart's there for that. They can do the same old thing they've done for the whole of their lives, because if we don't change, then we're not going to open any new value paradigms. Imagine... In a, do you imagine why there are so many philosophers and physicists in big data? What do philosophers and, and physicists have to do with each other? And yet we've all got them in our groups of friends. And why are they important? Because they ask questions all the time. What's important is the human being's ability to question things. You know what it's like if a, at university and a student comes to you and says, do you know Do you know what I've got to do in the uh, future? No, no, no. You have to ask that. They're the ones that have got to ask the questions. I can't give you the answers. We need to be questioning ourselves continually. And we need to be asking new value questions the whole time. So, to end, and I'm going to close soon. Don't worry. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, you know, he's just put a few overheads up of the 20 projects that he's involved in. Well, that's one possible. But the other thing is, look at this chart that's behind me. What you see behind me are the 10 uh, companies that have gre greatest um, stock market value on the planet. Or, as we say in my neighborhood, the biggest countries in the planet, the biggest countries in the world. You can see the usual suspects up there, can't you? You see them? You see the first one? There you go, the one that you've got in your pocket, Apple. Number two, you've got Google, Microsoft, Tencent, Alibaba, Facebook. But these companies... Where does their value reside in their data? In that data that Facebook. Where's Facebook? There. Why are you all looking sad? You're looking sad again. I can't understand. What is Facebook? It's a social network, yeah? I don't have anything against uh, Facebook. Facebook has played a social trick on us, but they've sold us a social network. When I was studying in the US and the University of Harvard student came, she was called Marsha, and she said to me, you know, if you, if you put your photo up on this new network that I've just seen, Facebook, they'll vote for you. And she thought that was great. So people started getting hooked, seeing things that they would never be able to do in history. And yet they've got us caught. They've got us trapped. Look at what Facebook is worth. Four. 0.6 times the Inditex group. The Inditex group is the biggest company by market value in Spain. This is the biggest media agency in the world. Facebook knows everything about everything that we do because we've fallen into their traps. 
You own uh, Instagram, don't you? Instagram, just by chance, was bought by Facebook. And you've all probably got WhatsApp, haven't you? You've got WhatsApp? And you're going to get cross with what I'm going to say now. But they're already using WhatsApp data. Don't think that if they were going to buy WhatsApp at $19 billion just to, for a bit of fun, they, what they bought Facebook there is the biggest database of social concerns in mankind. Because Facebook, because WhatsApp rather, we write down everything that we're worried about. Oh, my... my my, my left arm hurts more than two hours than it did two hours ago. All of a sudden, an advert pops up for a medicine to cure your arm ache. So we're talking here about revolutions thanks to the fact that social tricks that have been built we've all fallen into. Microsoft, Microsoft two years ago bought LinkedIn for $28 billion, a company that financially really doesn't capitalize very well, doesn't have a big EBITDA, doesn't have, doesn't have a great deal of profit, and they... Bought it for $28 billion. Why? Because it's got the biggest database for Microsoft clients, because they sell corporate solutions. So the pattern repeated. So we've gone. Ten years ago, in 2007, when I was a student, I remember this is the world that I was taught at university, at Deusto University. It was the world that was led by petrol companies and financial companies. All the le world leaders were sacks and other people. But look at it now. Look at thi how things have changed. These are the companies that are leading. These are companies that just use the data that we generate every day. Remember the credit cards, Alex's car, wireless connections. And remember sugar beet as well. All that data. Why? Because the planet is, is like that. It all sounds great when we want to digitalize, when we want to automate things, but big data is a consequence of digitalization of society. But it's a consequence that we didn't think about, and it's not something that we can control. In fact, more so than that, it would be nice if some of the MPs were here I'd like them to hear they them, I'd like them to listen to me say look the problem isn't the data per se but where the data come from i.e. computer departments but now it's peanuts to put a chip anywhere in the planet the problem isn't in big data the problem is in the previous step that's what needs to be uh, concentrated you need to concentrate on how many routers how many wireless routers are put out there not the control of the data. Anyway, we, Bilbao, are, in Bilbao, are very, very punctual. And I know you're all itching to go off for lunch. I'm going to give you a couple of little heart attacks now so that you can go off to lunch after a little heart attack. OK, you ready? I want you to go away with a good uh, memory of me. I want you to type in maps.google.com stroke location history. Do it on your own, not now. Do it on your own. Don't do it on the sofa at home with your wife sitting next to you. And there you can see what Google knows about you. Now you're really pissed off. I know you are. I can see you are. Don't look at me. Stop killing the messenger, for goodness sake. There you can see little balls of places where I've been. And the second heart attack I'm going to give you aren't these little blobs. Now you, I need you to go to the toilet, put the lock on the door in the toilet, and put double click on one of these little balls, because you'll see exactly what time you were there. Because Google Maps is a great tool. It's free. By the way, we IT people like free food as well. But when everything is free, and if you see all this map app that's free, you think, oh, yeah, I'll use that. Let's use Google Maps. Yay. And then we get cross with Google and Facebook. But we all like a free dinner. So, Google Maps is free. Of course it's free. Why wouldn't it be free? But that's the problem, that it is free. Whenever you do something that's free and it's digitalized, one of the projects that I mentioned previously is behind it. So, thanks. Thanks to all of you.
I'm going to leave you now with my contact data so you can criticize everything that I've said. You can ask me about things I've said. You can go on to Twitter. Uh, we're now trending top topic, by the way. FP Euskadi 2018 is now the third trending topic, topic on Twitter. So it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to be here. Next year, we'll be working with VET. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming.